This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Rhapsody Pattern and Drafting Guide. Our innovative approach to garment sizing and drafting lets you take your measurements and plot them on a pre-printed drafting guide to get a better foundation for a perfect fit. Go to sewhere.com slash patterns to get access now. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. Alrighty then. So we covered what to get, what to leave the store with when you get your new serger in a previous episode. And now we're going to cover what to get when you leave the store with a new sewing machine. Yeah. Yeah. So you're probably, you know, you probably have some sewing supplies at home. I don't know. I don't. I. I don't know if this is directed at like the first time. No, sewing I. Machine well, I don't think ever. it is because yeah. um, people, you know, step up in sewing machines. Right. Uh, sewing machines wear out. Whatever. And one of the things is if you do have a sewing machine. You may want to do something like take your feet from your old sewing machine and make sure they fit on your new, you know, right. w- without purchasing duplicates or something. Yeah. Um, that might, yeah, that might go into your, or, you, you know, I know I want two sets of feet, or I, you know, this or that. Right, right, right. I mean, you have yeah. to make, and are you keeping your other machine as a backup machine? Uh-huh. Blah, 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 you know, all that kind of thing. That's, um, that's a good point. I, I, it's been years that I've. I've almost always had a backup machine because I couldn't stand not to sew if I didn't have one. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start off like we did with the serger episode, I think. Thread. What kind of thread mm-hmm. do you need for your sewing machine? You need good quality thread. And if, I mean, I don't care if you bought a $200 machine or a $200,000 machine. You need good thread. Yes. Okay. You want to run good thread. If your you machine. do not have good thread, okay, you will be sorry. Yes. You might not be sorry right away, but you would, will eventually be sorry. And if you ever sew with good thread, you are ruined because you won't sew with anything else. <laughs> if there's a difference in the stitch. There's a difference in how it acts in your machine, and there's a difference in what it does to your machine. Yes, and we've covered that on a few episodes yeah. before about like you know don't buy crappy thread. And if you have crappy thread at home, throw it out. Make a Christmas ornament out of it. I don't care what you do, but don't use it anymore. And or use ha- it for hand basting. We don't run been, it through your machine. We have been uh, justified or supported, I think, by several other. Sewing bloggers like Russell yes. uh, has mentioned this that we like the Mettler Metrazine construction thread for constructing yes. anything. Really, we like polyester. To con- yeah, we yes. like to construct with it. So, yeah, did I say polyester? No, but okay. you said Metrazine, which, which is, is polyester. their polyester yeah. product. Yes. So, yeah, Metrazine is a polyester construction thread. I would really recommend getting that. It comes in a few different sizes of spool. That's right. Now, we used to sell a ZD's Neutral Pack, Mm -hmm. and it was the Magic Mauve gray and a white and a black. Uh Uh-huh. And those big spools, they are kind of pricey, but they do last a very long time. Right. And then the very small spools, I'm like, why do you sell this? Like (laughs) (laughs) I know. Unless wind a bobbin and you wind a bobbin and you can make like, you know, (laughs) part of a dress. Whatever. So I'd get I'd get those fabulous neutrals in the big spools and then maybe some more specialized colors in well medium. And the thing that we also try to teach people is your thread does not always have to be matchy matchy. Yes. Okay. Yes, we try to drive it's that It's not point supposed home a lot. to show. Okay. <laughs> and if you're top stitching, you you shouldn't be top stitching with um, construction thread anyway. You so, should be using a, a top stitch or a decorative type thread. Yeah, so the construction thread number one, okay, and then right. let's talk just briefly about decorative thread for sewing machines because we're going to get into embroidery thread mm-hmm. a little later, but depending on what kind of sewing you're going to do, like if you're going to do quilting, like actual, you know, quilt the layers together, if you're uh-huh. going to do decorative stitching. Because if we piece a quilt, we piece with the construction thread. Yeah, we we piece, use the polyester. There are some people that want to be cotton, 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 then do that. Yeah, right. yeah. so we would piece with that. But if you're going to actually, you know, quilt those layers together, 
if you're going to do any kind of artistic free motion, if you're going to use those fabulous decorative stitches on your machine, right. um, top stitching right. uh, onto a fine garment or something like that, you may look at the decorative threads in your sewing machine dealership, okay? And if you're going to use decorative thread, you will either want to use it in the bobbin or buy like a cone or um, they also have pre-wound bobbins of embroidery thread. Right, of Because a it is a lower lightweight thread and it will pull that top thread sort of a little bit to the bottom. You want mm -hmm. it to be a lighter weight or an equal weight. Yeah, so you may see machine embroidery thread in your mm -hmm. store. You may see, now sometimes quilting threads will be heavier. Okay. Right. Um, and then you'd probably want to wind your bobbin with those, like those right. 12 weights, those 30 weights. And not, right. They're not super duper well, heavy. Quilting, quilting and decorative stitching are two different things. Yep. So when we say decorative stitching, mm -hmm. we're not we do not mean the programmed embroidery stitches that have to have, you know, a separate unit that goes on to your machine and all that. And, it, okay, the decorative stitches are the ones that, you know, are multi-motion, but they your fabric is still going under the presser foot and yeah, it's using, using the feed dogs. Yeah, you're using the feed dogs. So, so like, your machine will stitch out a string of hearts right. or, you know, maybe even have a font but Before the current embroidery-type machines... Mm -hmm. Okay, we're home machines. They would call those decorative stitches embroidery they stitches. Would call those that embroidery. was, you know, yes. 30, 40 years ago. That's ringing some kind of bell for me, like we've covered right. that. You know, uh -huh. I can't remember which podcast. It's getting yeah, it's, a lot. Yeah, it's out there. We've said it more than once. So, but this, this episode was supposed to sort of be like, what you really need, right? definitely really need that construction thread. But if you are like, oh, I want to, you know, top stitch of this or quilt right. of that or whatever – Ask your dealer. They'll give you some specific pointers on decorative thread, right. okay, on your or on your quilting thread. But what so, we're talking about is mm -hmm. don't put nasty thread through that nice yes. new machine. Yes. Okay. Um, and then something that we hadn't written down yet. Uh, let's let's talk about needles. I oh, I this is what I was going to talk about next. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> you would like a library of needles. Yeah, you know. There are a lot of options in sewing machine land, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like, there are. And something we would give our customers, if your dealer carries Schmetz needles, mm -hmm. ask them if they have one of those little needle books for you. Right. Okay. Or a needle guide or a needle book. Yeah. You can check that out, and your dealer should ask you what you're trying to sew, okay? Right. And they can direct you, but let's pretend like you don't have time to talk about that or right. something. Or or, or you're going to say, well, just what would I just keep in my machine? What would just I? If, if I w didn't want to think about it and, you know, because sometimes you sit down to your machine and you, you, you're only going to sew, you know, eight inches of something. Right. So I would have somebody, we used to sell a universal pack that was a variety pack of right. sizes from 70 to 100. Right. Or like. 270s and like 380s and 390s and like one 100 or right. something. Does that add up to 10? I don't something know. Something would add up to 10. And okay. sometimes <laughs> that pack will also come with your machine. If it's a new machine and not a new used machine that you're buying, uh -huh. if it's new from the manufacturer, oftentimes it will have some needles um, with it. Now, my problem with those needles, go ahead and use them, is they're not always the quality I would like them to be. I don't know of a machine that comes with Schmetz needles. Right. Those so are you, our preferred you want, brands. Right. Uh, what's the other drug? Class A. Class right? A. There's another one, too. There's three that I like. I can't remember them. i got to look. Oh, well, never mind. Schmetz, Class A. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I am right. Um, Just... The, those two brands are our preferred ones. Now, Class A used to have a really cool little sampler. They had a neat, like, trial pack. Like, it had it had many needles, like it 20, had, 30 needles. I don't know had, what it had. I no, don't no, know. no. More well, than that? Well, maybe that's about right, 30, 30 to – because it was a bunch of five packs. And it right. had quilting and leather right. and microtex and right. stretch and da-da-da-da-da. So if I told you you had to go home, though, with some needles for your machine – right. You need that. I get some universals. So universals is not really sharp and not really blunt. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's sort of a sharp needle that they, you know, hone down to be not real sharp so that you could use it on a knit if you had to. And it still is going to work on most wovens. Right. So then I tell you, if you're going to sew any stretch fabric, get a stretch needle. Right. Versus knit. 
there's a knit needle and there's a stretch needle or there's a ballpoint needle. I would go for stretch. Yeah, the knit, the jersey ballpoint are the right. same. Jersey okay. and ballpoint are the same, correct. Get a stretch needle. And then I'd say definitely, before even that, I'd say get a Microtex. Get a pack of Microtex. Oh, my gosh. Microtex is like the miracle needle, I swear. I used to use a lot of denim needles that were like 70s. Yeah. Because they had, you know, the um, slick coating on them. Yeah. And they were, you know, he- strong and pierced well. And they had a big eye and a, you know. And now I'm like over to the Microtex. Yeah, for, the Microtex So are Microtex really nice. is have kind of become my all-purpose needle in some sense. I think that it's the one needle that could be like your universal replacement. It pierces strange things. Yes. That's why it's so nice. And it also, it will actually handle some types of knits that have a large, uh, high spandex. I I use them on, I use it on knits a lot. So I would definitely leave the store with Universal and Microtex, Mm -hmm. and I get a stretch if I could. If you're going to be hem and jeans, you want a little pack of denim or jeans needles that can be called either. Okay, and on then, the company. of course, if you're going to do leather, if you're going to do anything else right. specialty, ask about that. But definitely leave with those needles. Right. Okay. And, you know, again, your dealer, you should be able to say, I'm going to do this type of sewing. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, I'm going to get into some sensitive areas here. Not everyone buys their machine from a dealer. Sure. Sometimes they buy it from a big box store. And Uh, sometimes it's one of their only options. And it is their only option. And now, there can be a dealership within a box store. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so there are companies that will put dealerships inside these big box stores, and they're like an entity of their own. Right. Those people that are selling you those machines probably know what they're talking about. Right. And they they know what they're talking about when they're talking about needles. If you buy this machine at a big fabric store that maybe starts with the letter J or something like that. Okay. Um, and there's nothing wrong with this, but what I want to tell you is those people that are there t- are not machine savvy all the time. Okay. They're not always specifically trained. They have not. On the machine. It, it's doubtful that they have been trained on how much. Mis- you know, sewing machines really work and how needles really work and all that. So you might have to be careful. You might have to use some other resources like this podcast or something. But um, I, like I said, there's nothing particularly, you know, it, especially if that's your option. I would tell you, if you can, buy a machine from a dealer and a dealer that you think you will enjoy going back and forth to. Yeah. We've done a podcast on that too. Yeah. Um. Okay. So... You're going to get needles, and then you need to get bobbins, okay? You need more bobbins Extra than bobbins. come with your machine. If you think you can sew and be happy with five bobbins the rest of your life, you I don't think it's possible. Coming, okay? I just don't think it's possible. <laughs> I'd buy, I, I think most of the machines, they come with three to five bobbins, mm-hmm. and maybe more, depending, as you go right. up the line, you know. And these bobbins need to be specific to your machine. So if you're at, if you buy a machine from a dealer, get them from that dealer. If you buy them from the big box store, get the ones with that machine's name on it. Okay. And not just, I have a Singer, I'm going to buy Singer bobbins. You know, you look at your model number and you get the Singer 427 bobbins. Okay. You really don't want to be size messing with matters. That. <laughs> and, and the, you know, size and then sort the of material the, they're made out of, the angle yep. of how they're mm-hmm. cast and all that, right. you know, that all does matter. You know, we've had people be like, oh, well, I thought these would work. And it's like, you're just kind of creating extra trouble right. for yourself. You have to get more bobbins. Um, that is, that's going to be really important. If you, do, if you don't, you're going to be frustrated yes. at not having, and you know, you're not supposed to wind a bobbin on top of, Bo- a bobbin, bobbin that bobbin. already has yeah. thread on it, okay? Don't do that. Um, buy some more bobbins. I mean, our bobbins, I think when we were selling them, were like close to 75 cents a piece. Yeah. And that was, you know, they were a little bit on the pricey side, but it was worth it. Okay, and I... They last. I would buy 20. Yeah. If you can only get 10, get 10, but I would buy 20. Right, and you'll have them. I yes. mean, even the plastic ones, like... A plastic baby lock bobbin, which is the appropriate bobbin for, you know, most baby of these baby lock, locks. Right. Uh, not all of them. I mean, some of them take metal bobbins. But, like, unless I try and crush it with, like, 
my yeah. entire body weight yeah. or something. They, they're going to last no. you. I mean, you're going to lose it before it, right. something happens yeah, to it. Yeah, some little kid's going right. to steal your bobbin before you, like, you know, it, it's not like they crack or something. They're right. made of a very now, nice plastic. when we tell you to, like, wind a wind bobbin thread to use on your serger or something uh-huh. like that, and that serger, that that bobbin's not going to go into your machine, you could probably buy some cheap metal bobbin someplace, okay? Yeah, as long as it works in the yeah. winder on your machine. Now, if they look like your other bobbins uh-huh. or Be something, careful. you need to mark them with a Sharpie or nail polish or something and make sure they don't go in your machine. Yeah, I have had the experience, though, of some bobbins not fitting on certain bobbin winders, of course. That can you happen, know? So yeah. You, if you yeah. are going to do that yeah. bobbin trick, I, I you would, may need... I, I would say <laughs> most of those are very antiquated bobbins. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, okay, you're going to get extra bobbins, and then we're going to take a break and come back and talk about some other things. Did you know that we, SewHere.com, have patterns? That's right. We've created drafting guides that give you more control of your garment fitting and construction process. Need to get started on the perfect T-shirt? The Rhapsody is for you. Take your measurements, or those of someone you love, or someone who will pay you a million dollars, and plot them out on our pre-printed drafting guide. It's available as a tiled PDF or a large format AO file, so you have access to the drafting guide immediately after you purchase it. The Rhapsody instructions include info on how to draft for any body, no matter your size, proportions, or gender. Large busted stitchers Get my useful tip on how to create the boob bump so that your shirt will fit perfectly, even if other patterns have failed you. Go to SewHere.com slash patterns to check out our offerings, including the Rhapsody. Sewing out loud. And we're back. All right. Let's just real quick say our little spiel about small scissors. I feel like it's come up over the past <laughs> in the past month. We have spoken about this before, and we will speak about it forever because this will enhance your sewing life. And actually, baby locks, a lot of them come with a little pair yeah. of scissors. It's not like, you know, your most right. uh, deluxe pair of scissors, right. but it's like the principle of the thing that the machine comes with a little right. pair of scissors. So you need a pair of scissors that's... Between like four and six inches, maybe. Okay. Yeah. You six di- might even be. I don't know. Might be stretching it. <laughs> but but how how big are ZD favorite scissors? They're kind of long because they have the big four handle and a on half them. or something. Okay, because they have such a big handle. Yeah, but the you know. length is the blade, not the handle. Right. That's what how they measure scissors. Um. You do not want a big hawking pair of. Shears at your sewing machine. Yeah, if you, you will scar your machine. If that's the only pair of scissors you have at home, or, or a big pair of fabric shears or something, or you're not willing to right. get, get a pair of snips or small scissors to keep near your machine, okay? So if if you haven't if you haven't heard, you know the spiel. It's in other podcasts. You must get a small. We pair know to use people who have done hundreds of dollars worth of damage to their machine. Yes. Yes. So make sure that you have that small pair of scissors. So you want a small little pair of snips or scissors at your machine. Right. You know, in a four inch pair of scissors, that's a that's a good pair of yeah. like that's a that's a substantial blade there. But now you can not... buy some really nice, you know, um applique scissors, uh-huh. um embroidery scissors that, that you know you can I I'm into, you know, really high quality scissors. Right. But you know, it doesn't have now you want these because you'll clip or you'll cut or you whatever. So think about how you're going to use them. Even mm-hmm. if you have a sewing machine that's going to trim your threads, you're still, of course, going to want a pair of scissors that clips at your machine. Yeah, and, you know, we're going to talk about embroidery machines in a later episode and, you know, recommend some different things. But, yeah, I really would get, like, a, a real scissor, you know, for my sewing machine. Yeah, um, I, I yeah. do. I, 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 you might not just be doing threads. You might be right. clipping curves. Uh, you're clipping a curve clipping or you're clipping off a corner. You, some, just, yeah. you just don't know. You're, you know, you're, you're clipping some sort of cord, whatever. You just yes. don't know. Okay, a thread lift. Leave the store with a thread lift. But only if. It's it is box. what I call a commercial <laughs> metal thread lift. Yes. Plastic ones just don't work, guys. You know what's wrong with the plastic ones? 
They're filled with sand, and the sand leaks out. They will leak out. They will not be heavy enough. They like to turn over. We accidentally Let's, got... Yeah, we got a shipment one time. Some, and I gave them away to people, and I said, this is not my favorite. Right. Use this, to, <laughs> use this till it breaks. Yeah. Um, it's so what nothing. a thread lift is, is, you know, it's it's usually got a round metal... For us, a heavy round metal base. Yep. And there's a spool pin in it. And then on one, you know, side of it, there is a thread guide. So it is a arm that comes up. Yep. And turns somehow, you know, and has sort of a loop that you run your thread through. And then that can come across to your machine. Yes. And um, I we have seen some creations in the group. There have been some people who, like, do metal work and welding right. and stuff, and they've made some, and I'm like, well, hey. So I guess if you have a welder in your life, you don't <laughs> have you to go. buy one at the at the dealership. But do, if someone does make it for you, okay, just ask them, say, please make this all very smooth. I was going to say, you don't so, want anything where a thread can hang nothing out. Nothing where anything can catch, right. okay? so ask, And I'm sure they can do that, okay? So you, they need to make it real smooth. Um, but... We sold ours, I think they were under fifteen dollars. Right. Once again, a thing that lasts you forever. Yeah. You know, a, no, it you they, can't they kill them. Absolutely right. lasts forever. And Mallory was real good at selling my own personal ones well, we from sell, under me. We just run out of them all the time. Run out of them and then get a shipment in and sell them and da 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 right. da. And so yeah, I would um sorry. And our, now we do <laughs> we do have what? Do we have five machines set up in here right now? Six? Something like that. And how many thread lifts? We we'll probably do we have? have five thread lifts going. Yeah, on. just keep them around. We just love them. You only really probably need one. Okay, why do you? Because you need can it? move it. Yes, it's portable. But the reason you need it is if you have a spool of thread that doesn't fit nicely on your machine. Yeah. So if you buy the big, if you have a cone, a, a big cone of quilting thread. If, if, oh, they're they're amazing. You know, when you're using decorative threads yes. that are on cones and things like that, especially, you might wind up using a serger thread one time or something. I'd say especially if you buy one of the uh, more entry level machines. Yes. That don't have the spool. They don't in, always have an. What a, do I want to say? When like, an auxiliary. Um, spool or, pin. or they just don't even have the space. Right. You know, uh, right. they may even have like a vertical and a horizontal right. or something like now, that. Now, you may all use this not just even for needle thread. If you start to couch something yes. and, and you might yes. be putting a cord that's on a spool or something and using it in that way. Yeah. So if you get, you know, uh, we're sitting here next to like the Destiny and everything, but if you're somebody who gets one of those entry level baby locks, which their names have all changed, um, <laughs> I, I still don't know why they do that. Well, I I mean, yeah. Uh, but if you're getting one of those, I'd say the thread lift is even more important. You know, right? So uh, make sure to get one of those. It will you will find it useful in your sewing life. We guarantee. Um, and get one of those metal ones. Okay. If it's something your dealer doesn't carry, I will link to it in our uh, show notes. We'll we'll post an Amazon link to it. Um, another thing that we kind of debated, okay, we wanted to make this episode about, like, what you really need to go home with, okay? Right. What you, what you're going to go home and you're going to be able to sew happy, yes. okay, with. But this is, <clears throat> I think, if you can swing it. An extension table, absolutely for your machine. Unless you have a piece of furniture that yeah. you're buying that you drop it into, <laughs> and or if you can buy a piece of sewing furniture, mm -hmm. and a lot of people will consider that to be expensive or you know out of their reach or something, or not necessary. Yes, and maybe it's not for you. The way we sew, we have our machines up and out. So. Having that extension table, whether it comes from one that snaps right. on the machine or sits next to the machine or it comes from sewing furniture, right. it's going to help support larger projects, okay? It's going to help make it so that, like, if you are doing a blanket or, you know, you are doing a bigger dress or something like that, you are not going to have that weight dragging down right. your project. So some machines will come with it. And actually... When we were selling the baby locks as dealers, there was there were these two machines that were kind of similar in price, but one of them came with an extension table, and it would often make the difference right. for someone. They'd it say, was, oh, okay, it, but actually, if that. you bought that machine, you got more. 
the next machine up, you got more stitches and the extension table and, and this and this foot. and this. And, uh, where if you yeah. bought the extension table separately, it would bring the machine under it to the same price almost. Yes. And so. you can get, uh, even no matter the age of your machine. So let's say you're listening to this podcast. You're right. like, well, I'm not buying a new machine or something like that. Uh, there is a company called So Steady, and they will cut a plexiglass you know, um, table, table for extension your extension table that fits around the bed of your machine. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's custom. on the legs, yeah, it's on little the legs. adjustable legs. They're adjustable. So you can level them in case right. you're not level. So and they know your machine. Like yes. they have the template for every machine in the world. So you say, I have, you know, a Godzilla 482 and they know how to um, cut that and they come in different sizes uh, I will say so you can get a larger one you know like a huge one mm -hmm. or just a large like, one yeah there's like an 18 by 24 right. or 24 by 24 and actually right. I think they came out with a smaller one did they for like portable portable things like yeah. travel and I, a lot of people this is the other thing if you're going to take your machine places mm -hmm. you might have a drop in uh, you know piece of furniture at home okay that you know where you're, you know, you don't need that extension table. But if you are going to go to workshops and things and take your machine, you may want a portable table to take with you. Yes. So do, you know, consider that. You can probably go home and be happy for a little bit without it. But, yeah. But do consider it. Okay. Uh, I think the other thing, and this is not what you leave the store with, but I think it needs to be addressed uh -huh. for happiness. Uh-huh. You have to be on a stable work surface. Mm -hmm. So a folding table, like a general folding table that you just buy at, you know, um, you, one of your box stores or something, is probably not stable enough. Right. They're shaky. If you start, start to sew, your machine will go up and down. Um, you really need something that's nice and stable. It, so think about that. Yeah. Um, okay. Then... Before you leave the store, we're going to talk about feet a little bit. Uh -huh. And this is important. When you start to compare machines, like I said, there were like these two machines and they were priced, you know, in this way. Uh, and, I, you know, the higher cost one, it came with that extension table. And I think it was called some kind of quilter's edition. And it came with like a quarter inch foot. If you are going to And piece, a knee lift. And a knee lift. No, I think the other one had a knee lift, though, too. Did it. Uh, if you're going to be quilting... If you're going to piece quilts and then you're going to quilt things quarter inch away from the edges of other things, you should get that quarter inch foot. Now, there are going to be two quarter inch feet available to you. One with like a guide and one without a guide. And you're going to have to make that decision, you know, whichever one you want. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I can't help you there. What That's, she means <laughs> a guide is it has it like a blade on, on the, the edge of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the other one does not. They're like exactly the same foot, and one has a blade on the edge, and one does not. So this, and when I say blade, it's not for cutting. It's just a barrier to keep the fabric from moving out from under it. Yes, and so this foot, and this was a question we got in the Facebook group. They're like, what are all the markings on these presser mm -hmm. feet? <laughs> this foot, you put the needle in the center position, and the edge of the foot is a quarter inch away. The other edge of the foot's a quarter inch away. And then the front of the foot will have a mark that's a quarter inch away. And, and the, the back, back of the, the foot, foot has will have a mark right. that's a quarter. And so all so you, you know quilters, where to pivot if you're pivoting. There are all yes, these things. All you quilters who want to be using quarter inch seam allowances, don't leave without that foot if that's, that's what right. you want to be doing. You know, even Now, if, if you buy a quilting edition yeah. machine it, and it's marketed that way, it may have one. Okay. And so we don't quilt. <laughs> I've... We have quilted. I don't quilt. We just don't. On the regular. Right. Uh, I don't know if I've really ever gotten that quarter inch foot out. I've used it. I mean. I've used it for other things. But the foot. Yeah. So I'm, I want to say if you're a quilter, get that foot. Right. But then everybody else, and if you are a quilter or not, a garment sewer so or a quilter or whoever. I'll tell you where I've used that foot a lot. It's like I crazy quilt and piece things. Uh -huh. Or like a purse front or something like that. So I've used it. Okay, so I'll tell you what, what everybody needs, okay, no matter if you're a quilter or a garment sewer or whatever, is that edge joining foot. Yeah. Okay? Everyone needs that foot. Every single person, okay? So it, I, to my knowledge, does not come with any of the machines. Right. 
And it is not the same as your overcasting foot that it can look like. And it is not the same as your blind hem foot. It is not, it will, those two feet will not work the same. If they did, I would tell you. Yes, we would They talk. won't. <laughs> okay. Because with the edge joining foot, what you can do is you can use. Any type of stitch you can zigzag because the guide blade does not go into the needle area. That's With right. With those other feet, the blades go into the needle area. So it is not the same, everybody. We would tell you. And an edge joining foot can make you so happy. It will make you so happy. You will have that foot forever. You will use it for all sorts of things. All kinds of things. You'll put zippers in with it. Top stitching. Under stitching. Um, Stitching in the ditch. Stitching on the edge of some things. Joining two things together because that's what it was initially made for. Exactly. Um, We can go on and on. It will make you so happy. It's the edge joining foot. All of you need to go home with that. Now, if you get a foot kit... If some some promotions going on like that, the edge joining foot could be in there. But definitely get that. Now, most machines will come with a zipper foot of some kind. Yeah. I think even the most basic, like of the baby locks, came with some. Oh, everything always has even sort if of zipper foot. Even if it's that sliding universal yeah, one. Which is a great foot. Which actually that's a good foot. I like to have that foot. I like that narrow zipper foot. So baby lock has like their standard zipper foot and uh-huh. it can be kind of wide sometimes it'll be a little bulky for yeah me. and then they make a narrower one that looks very similar mm-hmm. and we do like that narrow one different brands of machine will have different zipper and feet. then there's the invisible zipper foot and if you are going to do invisible zippers yeah, i and i i'm sorry for all of those people that say you don't need one Okay, I know there's videos out there. I know there's people that swear you don't need one. You can use your regular foot and all of this. I was in love when because we used to have to buy like a universal yeah, weird old thing plastic can, thing from the zipper yeah, this companies. Is, this is a metal foot. This is that thing where it's like, know the rules before you break them. If you love to put invisible zippers in with some other kind of foot, like more power to you, you right. know. But from our professional you know, stance here, if you're going to put in invisible zippers, get, get, get that foot. You'll so, be so happy you do. Let me tell you what the invisible zipper foot does. When you're putting in an invisible zipper, okay, invisible zippers come with a coil versus teeth. And that coil rolls over onto, okay, the the tape, right? Right. The, the zipper tape. And what the invisible zipper foot does is it lifts that coil and brings it perpendicular to your fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what it does for you. You can do that with another foot. You can stand there and try and guess what perpendicular is and hold it up with your other hand while you... And you can do that, but... I would get an invisible zipper foot. Yes. So if you are, if you're like. Because I want to so happy. I'm going to make garments. Yes. I'm going to, you know, da, 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 that's a foot. Now, it, yeah, what are, what are your other. Well, I I always. Okay. So <laughs> I, I do a lot of appliqueing. Yes. Okay. A lot of appliqueing. I, so I apply things on top of other things. So I like a clear foot or a foot that has a clear window somehow. It might have plastic in it. Uh-huh. Right. And or an open-toed foot. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And the thing that's nice about an open-toed foot is a lot of times it will ride real well, like, over cording and everything if you don't have a cording foot. Now, that is one foot. The open-toe foot or in uh, Baby Lock has a decorative stitch foot called the end foot. Uh Uh-huh. That is one that might be coming with some of these machines. So that's kind of good So when we're talking about these, you know, you do have to – so – I don't, how many feet does a destiny come with? Like five million? Yeah, but it doesn't come with edge joining. And it doesn't come with edge joining (laughs) foot. And it doesn't come with all the zipper feet, does it? I don't know. No, no, it does not. It right. does not come with all the it zipper doesn't, feet. It doesn't come with a narrow one, it does it? It comes with a lot of quilting feet. Yeah. I think it comes with that sliding one. Uh-huh. And it comes with the big wide one. Right. But you, it doesn't come with the invisible. Well, because I might buy the Des- Destiny and never make a garment. Oh, sure. Or never put a zipper oh, yeah, in. Oh, yeah, no. Now, the thing is, is I put zippers in pillows, and I put zippers yeah. in dog beds. And, you know, so yeah. I want all those things. Now, there's a lot of other feet. There's feet that come with your machine. There's piping feet. There's cording feet. There's all these feet that you can look into. 
Um, your dealer should be happy to talk to you. Yeah, about them. they should be real happy. <laughs> um, and the more feet I can have, the happier I am. And something you mentioned just briefly at the end of the surgery one was storage. Okay. Yes. Check out what kind of foot storage your dealer right. might offer if if that is something that they've got because you do want to not lose these. They no, can you be, need to keep track of things. They can be pricey. And I, I believe we showed our storage. Uh -huh. in, um, we showed it in a zigzag broadcast. Oh, it was a zigzag broadcast. Mm -hmm. So um, usually they have something, if the dealer has something, it's sort of a tackle box looking kind of thing or something. Right. And right. if they don't have that specific to your machine, you can purchase things like that now. Right. Okay. Well, I th do any more feet? I'm trying, you know, as soon as we like conclude this broadcast i'll be thinking about some foot but i was that we were, is really i, we I trying thinking to about what i use you know there are pin tucking feet and oh, you, yeah. they can be used for other things so what i think is you know we need to do more broadcasts on feet and talk about those feet and that they are maybe multifunctional well, and not yeah, single we'll, functional we'll talk about that yeah. but this this podcast i think you'll be happy when you go right. home now you could be sad if you go home and you were looking to get your garment on and you don't have the invisible zipper foot right. or you don't, you know, you just won't know what you're missing without the edge joining foot. Okay. That, well, that is and a foot. I would say one thing that you can say to your dealer is this is what I want to sew. This is what I'm planning on sewing right away. Do I have everything here that makes this possible, you know, possible and fun for me? Right. <laughs> fun i had right. we talked about gift certificates in the last podcast and had somebody come in with a gift certificate and they were like i think i won that rolled hem foot and the rolled hem foot can be great okay right it, it can be fine but i said what are what are you planning to do she right. goes i don't know i just i just want to have it as like so you're like trying to have fun you know and <laughs> right. she was like yeah i was like well this isn't like the most fun foot and i think what i had her get was like a pin tuck foot and a cording foot uh -huh. they said these things you'll you go home and like fun. have fun yeah. you know whereas yeah a rolled hem <laughs> foot foot on your sewing machine a there's practice. a skill level yes. yeah yeah i was sort of like are you trying to go home and do something right now with this foot she's like no just just trying to have a good time and i was like well there are other ways to have a good time with <laughs> with feet other than the rolled them so all right that's what you need to go home and so happy um on your sewing machine and if you have any more questions for us you can email me at mallory at sewhere.com and you can get to us on instagram at sewhere.com zd so long and so happy thanks for listening to sewing out loud for even more expert sewing advice visit sewhere.com